Welcome to the U World Order Showcase Podcast. Your host, Jill Hart, the coach's alchemist. Couldn't be more excited to have you join us today. On this podcast, we celebrate the champions of change, the up and coming life, health and transformational coaches who are fearlessly stepping forward to make a difference in the world. Get ready for inspiring stories, practical tips, and powerful moments that will motivate you to make a positive change in your life and those around you. We're happy to have you join us on this incredible journey as we dive into the world of life, health, and transformational coaches who are lighting up the path towards a better tomorrow. Hello and welcome to the You World Order podcast. Today, I'm very excited to introduce Daylene Higgins, virtual financial coach, CEO, and podcast host of Wealthy After 40. Hi, Daylene. Welcome. Thank you, Casey. I'm excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. This is going to be a great, uh, wonderful conversation, and I'm really excited to, to get into it. So why don't you just jump right in? Um, and just tell uh, everyone about yourself, um, where you got started, your journey, where you're at now, where you're going, everything about you. This is an episode about you. So no pressure awesome. there. Um, awesome. Just really excited to, to kind of hear your journey. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, I have been a financial coach for just over a year, but what led me to it was um, June 1st of 2022, I retired. So prior to retiring, I served for 32 years in government um, with law enforcement, and I was ready to just be done with that, you know, nine to five, punching the time clock, all of that thing. So I was 50 and I thought, what am I going to do? You know, so prior to retirement, throwing a bunch of ideas around, I wanted it to be something that I enjoyed, something that I loved because, and I didn't, it's not that I didn't love my job, but I still wanted to enjoy every day. So I'm an avid reader. So I thought, well, I could go volunteer in the schools. And I'm like, ah, then I'm still in somebody else's timeline, you know, sorting through all of the things. And I came across financial coaching and it just struck a bell with me. I was like, you have just reached your financial goal your financial dream. And this feeling that you're having, I decided I wanted others to feel this. And so I found um, the AFCPE, which is a certification. And then I also found a training to get me going. I mean, I had my course, I had my experience, um, how to, you know, organize and set everything up, but just needed a little refining of support on how you actually, you know, coach people through these things. And so I began my journey in January of 2022, um, studying for all those exams, um, learning some more information, and then started marketing, um, Elevate Finances, which is my company name that I started and um, became official full-time entrepreneur Jan um, June 1 of 2022. So got going mm -hmm. and, you know, as I love being a coach. And I heard somebody else say, you know, I just want to help people with their numbers, but it's so much more than that being an entrepreneur, which is fine. You know, we have to do that to get out there. And it's not that I haven't enjoyed the journey. It's been definitely growing. Um, I've learned a lot. I've become a marketer. I'm not, you know, great, but getting there, we all have, have to learn something and move forward. But um, I love, so I love coaching and I have, you know, loved this space that I found when I was 35, I was like, oh, I can um, retire at the age of 48 if I have my, you know, ducks in a row, basically, because the day I retire, I'm taking a 40% cut in pay. So my daughter um, was eight years old. So we still had all of her time, you know, her growth. We, you know, so it's not like I sat there and did nothing so that I could retire. Um, I just want to share with everybody. I still had a journey of, you know, buying things, enjoying things. We had recreational property. We bought recreational vehicles. You know, my daughter went through soccer and then she was a band, you know, and all of the things, but 
also staying focused on what I wanted the end result to be. So, you know, trying to handle both, which I get asked a lot of, well, how do you handle now and the future? And, you know, so that's really what I was doing from age 35 until age 50. And uh, so you just kind of have to get focused on what you truly want. And, you know, sometimes I don't think that individuals spend enough time really seeking what their desires are and understanding what those are because once you feel it and once you know it's something you want to me it becomes easier to obtain and it can go with anything in your life so you know just having that desire and then having a plan and a budget nobody likes that word so <laughs> no. where I worked for the last 15 years, I helped cops learn how to budget. And, you know, so it was this horrible word, you know, what do we do and how do we do it? And it's a once a year thing. And so, you know, I trained, there was 22 of them every single year. And I had all sorts of different personalities. I had those who are like, I will never learn this. And I don't want to learn this. And I can't understand this. So I would teach them from a different level than those who were, I want to learn this. I want to be good at this. And I want to like this. And so I would teach them at that level and then everywhere in between. So I feel like that has prepared me to be able to work with individuals in their finances, because, you know, if you add personal finances on the front of that, it is personal for everyone. And we're all individuals. We all think differently, view things differently, handle, you know, numbers are different for everybody. So I really love that. And I support that in my coaching. Like I don't have just, here's a spreadsheet. We're going to put you in it and then you got to use it. No, what do you want to do? What do you want from your numbers and how much time do you want to spend with them? And, you know, really working with the individual to create something that they're going to be passionate about, maybe not passionate, but that they're going to enjoy and that they're going to reach their passion. So, yeah, I have loved my journey so far and trying to reach those who need my help and want my help. And, you know, so. That's really, really great, especially nowadays. Um, and congratulations on your journey because, you know, going from where you started from and you setting your own goals to where you are. And now you kind of, Hey, you know, these things have worked for me and now yeah. I want to help other people. And that, that's coming from a wonderful place. Um, and I, I particularly love to talk with people because of, of all different type of coaching status, right? Because, you know, we tend to think of coaches like, life coach or emotional or spiritual or holistic, but finances are such a huge part of our lives. And it's so connected to life stresses, which can be emotional. And I think a lot of people don't know where to turn. It's easy to say, well, just save your money if that's what you want in your life. And it's not that simple. I know I struggle with that. So that's really wonderful to hear that you've come up with a great process that works through the different possible yes. anxieties, um, yes. emotional connections with things, maybe helping people realize their potential. Right, um, right. You know, yeah. I think a lot of people think I want this or I want that in life, not knowing how to get there. We're not realizing that they can get there, mm -hmm. but making, you know, and it seems mm -hmm. like you're the type of person to be able to get them to help them to believe. Yes, you yes. can get there. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I've just been recently been working on really defining what I termed are the phases of budgeting. And so it's not even within these phases, it's not okay. The first one, you've got to take your numbers and you got to do this, like eliminating all of that and just identifying the feelings and the emotions and being able to tell somebody like phase one is hard. Phase one, nothing's going to work. It's going to be a mess and you just got to keep going. But once you discover what is causing the messes, then you moved into the next phase where you're like, oh, that has to be in here, you know, and you just kind of work through these phases. Um, and then the last phase I called stability. It's kind of where I'm at, right? Like I'm in a stable um with what I've got going on and not a lot of life changes are happening. I've reached my financial goal. You know, I still have goals aside from that as well and still have to maintain everything that I've got going on, but really just recognizing that through the phases and understanding that you are going to experience, you know, um, frustration 
and upset and feeling like this isn't like you can't do this. And typically I tell people, it's not that you can't do this. The numbers aren't working yet. So as soon as you get your head around that, then you can start seeing, oh, I've left things out and it's not you, it's the numbers. And so being mm -hmm. able to grow with your budget and stick with it. And I know it's hard. You know, a lot of people, they join my Facebook group and they're like, I just need to stay consistent. I need to be motivated. And, you know, it's some things that's easier for others. Like for fitness, for me, I just need to be motivated. So I get it when people say, I just need to be motivated, you know, whereas mm -hmm. other, somebody else might say, well, it's just easy. You just do it, you know? And so recognizing that everybody can be at a different point, but trying to find what it's like with your kids trying to find that one thing that motivates them to do the things they don't want to do. And so, you know, that's the same with us. Well, what is going to motivate you to want to spend time with your numbers instead of avoiding them so that you don't have to avoid them anymore, right? It's, it, you're avoiding it because something happened, but I bet that's not still the case. You just don't know and you don't dare look. And so, get somebody on board with you to even take that first look. And it just is so yeah. scary and so hard, but I was just going to say the fear that yes. is sorry to cut you off, but it's just no, when you yeah. say that's just like, it is like that fear and that yeah. avoidance. And I know I was reading on your website that sometimes you just try to avoid it, that it's not real, that you aren't, you know, that maybe I'm not struggling with the numbers. Like I'm not a numbers person. So mm -hmm. like I am probably one of your best, could be one of your best clients <laughs> because I just try to avoid it at all costs. And I just, when, you know, up until the last minute, I pay everything that I need to pay. Um, and I think that's a lot of people. I think we just yeah. go through the motions yeah. and it, it, that gets very exhausting. Um, you know, and the worry all the time, especially nowadays when everything is so, so super expensive yes. and the stress and like when budgeting goes out the window, how do you handle if someone's like, well, I made a budget and, you know, but things are so out of control now. Like I took my car the other day and I obviously didn't budget a $3,500, right. you know, uh, repair bill, you know, right. so then you have to sit back. Like, how do you, how do you handle the, would obviously without giving away your, your secrets and your coaching, of course, oh, yeah. but how do you handle the unexpected? So in the financial world. Yeah. I want to share a story. I was working with a client and we were tackling his debt. His dad had helped him pay it off a couple of times before, but he finally said, uh, something's broke. We need to do a different approach. I can't just keep paying it off for you. So um, we got working together and we actually discovered the driver of his debt because I believe that there is one aspect of your bills of your somewhere that is driving your net debt and it's not just you're racking up your credit cards you're spending money you know fruitlessly his was actually his rent you know rent has gone up and so he was like struggling and just at that point with a lot of other mindset issues wasn't ready to tackle it on his own. So we got it squared away. We got everything set up in a budget that was comfortable and he sustainable to get him moving forward. And so we were at it about three weeks and his engine blew in his truck. And so, yeah, $10,000. And so I'm like, what did, okay, what did you do? What did you think? And he's like, I was so glad I was working with you when this happened. And I says, okay, but go back again. And he realized that he had time to cool down because it was on a Friday. He was headed to a party. Um, it broke down. So, you know, people were following. So they got him anyways, all squared up. So he goes, I couldn't do anything. I just had to let it be. And realizing that sometimes we just have to pause in the moment, even though, you know, that was his only modes of transportation. So as when he got back and was sharing that with me, I'm like, okay, so what do you want to do? What do you need to do? What are your options? And sometimes it's really just getting yourself outside of those emotions and, you know, going, okay, now what can I do and what do I do? And he actually ended up buying a, a vehicle. He qualified just fine on it. Yes, it added more debt, but he was now able to go start a side hustle with DoorDash and Uber Eats because gas wouldn't cost him as much as it was in his other vehicle. So, you know, just trying to balance that and figure out the best, the best plan for you in that moment, minus the emotion. And I think that's where a lot of people are like, oh my gosh, but I've got to do something. And, 
had he you know reacted with that and gone out on Saturday to the dealer and bought a brand new car then what you know but no he paused somebody's like you can borrow my car while you're figuring it out you know instead of just rushing into that next option he weighed and he did his homework and it only took him about uh, six-ish weeks to really get it under control and he's like nope this is what I can do and now I can do this and so yeah it just it is hard um and especially with inflation you know especially on groceries and all of that but and hindsight's 2020 but if you are saving anything then when inflation hits you have the ability to make that adjustment so you know really the biggest thing the biggest rule you can start is you know living on less than you make and sometimes we feel like we can't do that my daughter just started her you know first career job and but she's making decent money and she's like it's hard mom it's hard and she's bought her a new car and all. and i said it is it's rough when you're starting out i said but the thing is is you got to just stay the course and be good with it and grow with it instead of just always staying it's always going to be hard you know i think sometimes we're like it's just always going to feel this way so we make it feel that way yeah so. yeah and i i love how you incorporate consistency and mindset um because so many things in our lives rely on that. So yeah. why wouldn't this be different? You know, why right. wouldn't our finances be different? Um, you know, you don't have to be a numbers person, but if you, you know, if you mm -hmm. set a plan for yourself and also, and I think it's really great, like the story, you know, thank you for sharing that. Yeah. You know, he probably felt so comfortable too, to be able to discuss that outside of his, maybe his freak out. Right. So yeah. like, I mean, yeah, I mean, I had my freak out with my car and I, you know, I'm obviously I'm not working with anybody, but like, sometimes you just have to step back and say, okay, there has to be other options. Let's mm -hmm. you know, think of, think about it a little bit and yeah. take a breath. Um, you know, maybe you're not right. Like you said, you're not going to get there right away. Um, but I love how your support there helped him work through because he probably would have made a worse decision right. had he not taken the breath or taking your advice yeah. or, or, yeah. you know, and having someone outside of it, outside of your, your worry bubble, I love to call it because yes. you, you see things like almost blurry because you, you know, you're, you're only focusing on the car blew up, the car blew up, the car blew up. Okay. And then it's nice to have someone outside of that going, okay, so how are we going to, how are we going to work through this? So yeah. I love how it's not just about the finances, you're actually helping people change habits um, with consistency. And I, and I, and I love that. So why don't you tell me about some of like your big, biggest successes? Obviously that's a successful story, but why don't you go into some of your biz, biggest successes? Cause I imagine that's gotta be very fulfilling when you're helping someone through a tough time and then getting them to the light at the end of the tunnel per se, yeah. you know, reaching their goals. That must feel pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's always fun. It's always, in fact, um, we ended at our three months, you know, so he's still continuing his journey and I'm like, oh, my baby's going off to school by himself, you know? And it's <laughs> like, I got so attached, but he was such a good client too, like putting him, putting in the work. Um, and just me allowing that space for him. I had another client who, um, after 40 years, found herself divorced. And she had managed the money early on before the children. And then once the children, you know, obviously she had a lot of other activities and chores she was taking care of. So he kind of took over and then he really became controlling with it. So when she came to me, she's like, I hate money. I don't want to do it, you know, and it was a lot of different reasons and she had done it before. So it wasn't even the fact that she didn't know how to do it. There was just a lot of ire with it. And, you know, she even said, I just spend despite him. So, you know, he'll cover it. He'll cover it. I'm like, okay, but you don't have that anymore. So working through those issues of now it's you, you've done it before. Let's create you a system. And she was um, older. So I'm like, I, I guess you're not a tech person. She's like, no, no. And I'm like, okay, pen and paper. Do you want to do, you know? And so again, that just shows how I, instead of doing, oh, hey, here's a spreadsheet, but you're not techie. I'm going to force you into this. You know? And so I just said, what was working for you? What have you been doing? You know, what do you know? And so we just kind of created a system that was as simple as she watched one account for her spending 
and she had all the other bills coming up the other one and just kind of worked from there. And so to be able to lose that hate around the money, because that it had a whole lot of, you know, other stories behind it and not just money herself, but realizing that she could, um, she could do well. And she had a, um, I forget it was, wasn't a coach. It was somebody else who were, was helping her through this hard time of life, really getting into the feelings and the emotions of just the divorce itself. And she says, you need to loosen up and have fun. She goes, so I went shopping. I went on a shopping spree. And so she's like, I probably shouldn't have done that. And I said, well, so what are you going to do? You've already done it. What are you going to do? You know, and so just working through those, as we work through the time, there's a lot of those things that come up that have been habit before, but just to reframe and just to look at again and her go, oh, I said, well, did you buy fun stuff? She's like, yeah. And I said, so what are you not going to be able to buy now that you spend it on this? That's all it means. It's just a shift. And she's like, oh yeah, you're right. You know, so she wasn't too hard on herself after I explained like, no, you know, I, I see how you're trying to fit two different models, you know, to have fun, to go think, you know, go do that. And to you, that's fun. But then it's like, oh crap, now I have to pay the consequences, but you can just shift around and just explore. So, uh, she was a lot of fun. And then another one, which was very, I want to say simple in a way, um, but this couple came and they're like, we do okay with money, but I have no, no organization. I don't even know where to start. Um, you know, she experienced ADD. She, you know, and she's like, I just don't even know where to start. And I'm like, okay, well, what do you want? You know, what do you think? And what could you handle? And so we worked through her, got her organized and she's like, oh my gosh, I see, I knew I had money for the things that I did, but she, now she was actually seeing the work of it, you know, and she knew they were okay, but she's like, are we really okay? Cause there was no evidence that they truly were okay. So yeah, working with her. And then I've coached her, uh, two kids. Cause she's like, I just want you to talk to them. So coach them, you know, through their just teenage years and just help them understand money. And, um, I asked them, I, and so a 14 year old and a 16 year old, and I asked them where money came from the 14 year old kind of looked towards her mom. And I'm like, no, it doesn't come from your mom, you know? And then the 16 year old, he went as far as the mint. I said, yeah, they make it there, but where does the money come from? You know? So it's interesting that, um, you know, just trying to talk to kids and I know, you know, talking about money isn't easy. A lot of people, um, in this space that they've told me, I just don't talk to my kids about it. Cause I was always told we didn't have money. Just going to say that. Yeah. We were always yeah. talking about, we don't talk about yeah. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I had really good parents who never said we didn't have money, but as I got older, I'm like, Oh, the way that my mom would shift it, you mm -hmm. know? So it'd be like, Hey mom, you know, and this brand name shirt. And she's like, well, I'm sure that's great, but let's go see if we can find a different one at this store. I was like, Oh, okay. You know? And it just worked. And so, you know, trying to learn, you know, trying to talk to kids where you were in a situation where you felt like you came out of it, hating money and you're in a scarcity mindset. And so now you're avoiding it with your kids is only going to create the same thing. Um, but it's, I try to tell people you can talk about money without talking about the numbers. You know, where are you saving your money? What are you doing for your retirement? What are you doing for your insurance even? Who's taking care of your car insurance? And you don't even have to talk numbers, but just start talking about things that, you know, have money. What are you doing now that groceries have gone up? You know, that's an easy money conversation to have and start talking about it more. And with your kids, it's, you know, age appropriate, but it's like, teach them from the get-go that, um, you know, you've got money, you've got to save it or spend it, but you can't have both. But if you spend it, it's gone, you know, and just kind of focusing on that way. I had a great episode this past week release with his name, Sam X Rennick. And his focus is on little, little kids, like ages three to seven. He does songs, he does coloring papers. But anyways, I had him guest on my um, podcast and he said, we need to teach kids to spend, to save you know, spend your money to save it. So you're going to spend it into the piggy bank. You're going to spend it into the savings account. And I just love the way he talked about it and how to share with kids. And then he 
shared an experience from his growing up years. Hey, dad, can we go down and get this from the you know corner mart? He's like, no, you don't make the money. We make the money and we get to decide what we're going to buy with it. If you really want that, where are you going to get the money? You know, so just trying to tell him where money came from and they didn't make the decisions as kids instead. And, you know, his dad didn't say we don't have the money. And he's like, I know now we didn't have that money, but he just says, we don't spend our money on that. And you don't make the decisions. And I just loved how to put it in perspective of, you know, parent to child, but yeah, just, and then forced, you know, not forced him, but taught him to where to go to earn money and work. And then what are you going to do with your money? So, yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting that your beginning conversations. So I love that you spoke to the 14 year old and the 16 year old, cause I actually have a 14 year old and a 16 year old and my 16 year old just started working. Mm-hmm. So it's been very, very interesting. She started about like last October or something like that. Um, and she's seeing now and it's, and it's, and it's really kind of remarkable to, to watch because there's such a more of an awareness now, like previous, it was, Hey mom, can we, you know, can we go up to the mall or Hey mom, there was no uh, connection to it. There was no, where is the money yes. coming from? There was not that connection. Um, and then to the responsibility and understanding and then putting your work ethic into it. Um, so she's just been saving and saving and she's been doing phenomenal. She's saving, saving, saving. So then the other day we went to the mall last week and there was there, these sneakers that she's been eyeing for the longest time. Mm-hmm. And I was like, okay, well, you know, you're working now. Now, obviously as a mother, I still do the necessities of being a parent. So yep. when you need clothes, you're going to get clothes from me. Obviously I'm going to feed you. Obviously, yes. you know, you, you're going to need your eyeglasses and your contacts. Um, but now I'm starting to say, okay, you're working now. So like, if you want those sh- shoes and they were, you know, they were pretty pricey yeah. and we saw them and then she put them back and I can tell she was just being conscious of it. Um, and I, and I let it be, and I let it be, and she stewed, she didn't get them that day. Second, fast forward to the second time she went to, uh, the mall with a girlfriend of hers and she texted me a picture of them and she was like, mom, I got them. And I was so proud of her. And, you know, I had to give her a little bit of a lesson. I said, I'm so proud of you. And then she started a little bit of that guilt, that buyer's guilt, like, oh, but it's so much money. Mm. And I said, yes, but you also work very hard for yourself. And every now and then, as long as your responsibilities are met and you want to spend a little money, even though that's gone out of your bank account, you understand that you worked for it. Yeah. Sure. You could save every single penny, but you, you it's okay to enjoy it. Yeah. It's yeah. okay to enjoy. So it's, that was like a very proud, like, you know, kind of parent moment yes. uh, for me because, you know, her recognition. And I don't, I just, I don't think that, you know, I don't think parents are talking and I think to their children. And I think that nowadays it's like, it's still a hush hush thing. Mm-hmm. And I think that causes a lot of issues because, you know, the next generation coming up, there's, you know, there's no finance classes in high schools and, right. you know, they don't even yeah. know what a checkbook is or, you know, yeah. and they don't know these things. So it's, not discussed. So I love your tactic of just talking about it and just making it a conversation. Um, I think that's, I I love that. I absolutely love that because it'll trickle down. So like, I know what your target is, but once you start clearly connecting with people on the level of your connecting people, then it's just going to start trickling down. That's where you're really like starting to really help people. And I I absolutely love that. That's fantastic. Yeah. That's yeah. Really thank you. Great. Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Fun. Um, you know, I'm in your demographic, obviously, so I'm very intrigued, but how do you think, um, you know, people, I mean, it's very hard to admit, right. That you have some troubles. How do you yeah. get over that kind of hump? I'm going to say of, you know, and I think this is very different and, and this is why I'm enjoying this conversation because when I used to think about someone who's giving you advice financially, it's like this cold office with a guy with like a tie all the way up to his neck and like has like a cal- calculator in front of him. Yeah. Um, and it seems so cold and scary. Um, and I think that's what a lot of people correlate with it. And, and mm-hmm. it becomes a scary thing. And mm-hmm. um, how do you approach someone that is like super scared about talking about their finances? Because it could be an also a very, um, whatever it's guilt because they're spending long yeah. or, Uh, fear of talking about it, admitting that like you've 
made poor decisions and right, went to right. like, that. like, how do you deal with that part of it and that kind of resistance? Yeah. Yeah. So definitely get a lot of that because it is being vulnerable. Um, and I understand all of the feelings behind it. I, um, was talking with my massage therapist and I'm like, you know, I wasn't perfect with my money. And she goes, you know, that's why I don't like going to my financial advisor because she's like so perfect. And she makes sure she tells me that. And I said, oh no, 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 she was not and is not perfect. You know? So I try to share with people that yes, I'm here, but I had, you know, I made mistakes. I probably overspent at times I indulged, you know, um, how do you make a right decision if you don't know what a wrong decision is? So, um, you know, it's, I, they get caught up in the emotions of it. And I totally understand the shame, the fear, um, they're embarrassed. And I try to explain to those who say, I'm just so embarrassed to come to you that I don't even look at it that way. I am such a numbers person. I've done it for so long and it just excites me that I have a puzzle. So that's what I think of it as. I have a puzzle to fix because you have the point you're at now. I don't care how you got there. Honestly, I do not care how you got there because it doesn't make any, um, it doesn't matter to moving forward. So where you're at the day you come to me, first session, and where you want to go, which is going to be on to all of our sessions, but, you know, and then just determining that plan and that path and go, okay, so if you're going to want to do that, um, you know, here, here's how you can, or, oh, here's some changes you're going to need to make. No judgment, no judgment. And I just try to explain to them, I really, I really don't, because to me, numbers have no emotion. I know you have emotion with your numbers and that's fine, but numbers don't have emotion. You know, a one is a one with you or somebody else. And so it's just, okay, well, how's that one going to fit into your final plan of, you know, a million or whatever it is. And so just, you know, just realizing that somebody who is a coach, um, we don't tell you what to do either, right? We hold the space for you to get rid of those feelings and to look beyond. And because there's something you're good at. There's something that you enjoy doing and there's talents that you have. So as we explore those, then we just make the tweaks that need to happen to make those even more effective in what your end goal is. So, you know, it's, it definitely is hard to make that first step and to be vulnerable to somebody. I always, like the first time it came up, I was like, okay, but it's a virtual. So you're not having to come to, you know, my office, which I have books and my reading chair and all my stuff, but you get to stay in the warmth of your house or in the comfort of your bed or wherever, you know, it's, it's a little more comfortable. Yes, you're going to be vulnerable, but you're still in that safe space. So I love where, you know, we have gone virtual with a lot of these coaching things that it just allows you to feel safe with something that, you know, you're going to have to deliver that you don't feel comfortable in doing. So I really think that has helped a lot of people deal with whatever area of coaching they're getting. It just, you know, you think it, like you think about it, you're in your house, you're supported, but then you're just going to word vomit to somebody about how, how, and what is going on. And then they're going to help you pick up the pieces all the time you're sitting in your house and you go, okay, now I've got the pieces and she's told me what to do. Then I can go and do it. Cause you're right where you need to be to go start that. Whereas if you drove to an office, okay, you're not comfortable. Are you going to share as more as openly as you would, if you were at your home and then you have to leave there with the pieces and who knows, you might stop for lunch or you might grab a snack or something. And by the time you get home, you'll be like, well, I'm not really clear on those pieces now. So I think, you know, being virtual can just be such an advantage in these situ in these vulnerable situations of coaching. So, you know, I would hope people would maybe find the comfort in that and then just recognize that as coaches, really, we just want to serve people. We just want to help. I just want to help people be happy with what their life is. And 95% of our lives take money, right? Yeah everything takes money really, except for breathing. 
because air is free, I think, you know, right. So yeah, it's just crazy. No, and that's, that's fantastic. And I think you're right. You know, when someone's in a more comfortable environment makes it a lot easier and, and, and definitely your aspect of it and your platform for that, I think in my mind would be more successful because that's scary to, to walk up to, you know, someone's, you know, fourth floor, you know, yeah. office that's, you know, in, in, you know, in a pin suit, you know, pinstripe suit. And it's, it's intimidating. It's intimidating. Yeah. And, yeah. and you immediately feel like you're, you're, you know, you did something wrong, even if it's the right. nicest person in the world, right. It's the environment and, and they're definitely not tapping into emotions and, and habits and stuff. They're going to pretty much give you like a booklet and a spreadsheet and say, this is what you need to do. And, and, you know, they will be about numbers too, but they're not, it, the, the thing is, is that I believe that the issues would keep happening if you don't solve the emotions mm-hmm. that are causing you to make those issues yeah. or pinpointing the actual problem. You know, yep. it's not as easy sometimes as, well, just save dot, dot, dot amount of money. And sometimes it's just yeah. not that simple all the time. Exactly. So I, I love, exactly. I love it. I love it. I love your aim because it makes it, um, it makes it okay to talk about it. Yes. <laughs> it makes it okay yes. to talk about it. Yes. Um, but I would love for our listeners to find you. Um, so why don't you just yeah. um, give us some information about how um, someone can contact you, your website, um, everything about you, where, where can they find you? All right. So I always love to say, if you want to learn more about me, head on over to Instagram, elevate underscore finances, where I show, show a little more personality. If you're looking for support, immediate support, um, my Facebook group, all things, personal finance, um, basically we're focused on, you know, finding freedom with our money. Um, and my website is www.elevatefinances.us. And I have my packages on there. Um, it links to my podcast, but you can find my podcast, which is Wealthy After 40 on any listening platform. And I think I just released episode 18, which I was talking about with Sam X Rennick. So there's some good info out there and some more coming. And I'm also on LinkedIn if you want to head over that way as well under Daylene Higgins. Wonderful. Daylene, I thank you so much. You opened my eyes. Um, I almost feel like it's financial therapy um, in, in, in a way. Um, and I, and I believe that breeds success. Um, and when you breed success, you know, you're, you're going to make change and you're going to do good things. And I really do believe um, that your process does that. So thank you so much for sharing all of this information. And um, Daylene just gave all of her contact information and we'll list it. Um, as well when we uh, drop the episode um, so that people can get in contact if they need. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to another empowering episode of the You World Order Showcase podcast. We hope you've enjoyed hearing from our incredible life, health, and transformational coaches who are making a profound impact on the world. Remember, change begins with you, and you have the power to transform your life and the lives of others. If you want to take that next step and unlock your true potential, visit thecoachesalchemist.com where you can find the three ways we can help you for free to spin your talent into gold with clarity, a system, and a plan. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you never miss an inspiring episode. And if you enjoyed today's show, we'd greatly appreciate it if you could leave us a review on your favorite podcast platform. Your feedback means the world to us and helps us reach more people with our positive message. Stay connected with us on social media for updates, behind the scenes content, and upcoming guest announcements. You can find us on Facebook at the U World Order or simply visit thecoachesalchemist.com.